Meet the greatest hater of all time, Maurice. See, Maurice had a problem. He hated this woman, not because she was smarter than him. It's because she knew she was smarter than him. Oh, and Rosalind was brilliant. Maurice's boss hired her. He said, Sade, she said, what's good? He said, what you working on? She said, oh, they got me working on like, actually. He said, no, 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 scratch that. You working on DNA. She said, damn, ain't Maurice working on that? He said, yeah, I'm gonna tell him though. Don't worry, he forgot to tell him. So Maurice is sitting there working on DNA. He looks to his right, he sees a young woman. He says, oh, they got me a new assistant. Hey, uh, Shadi, get me some coffee. She says, shh, shh, shh. He said, oh, no, nah. you know who you're talking to, girl? She said, go get me some water. He said, oh, no. So Maurice goes over to his boss and goes, there's this crazy girl out there talking like I work for her. His boss goes, that is crazy because you don't work for her. Actually, you're just going to get in her way. Maurice goes, no, nah, y'all can't do that. I took pictures of DNA already. He said, no, Rosalind already looked at those. She said they bad. Maurice goes, think again. My student Gosling is right here. He took the pictures with me. Gosling, tell him. Gosling go, who your student? Oh, I work for her now. I forgot to tell you. Maurice storms out the office. He goes over to the lab where Rosalind's studying. He goes, yeah. Damn, this place looks futuristic. Rosalind, what you doing here? Now, what aggravated him the most was her air of cool superiority. Rosalind turns around and looks him dead in the eye because she always looks people in the eye. Maurice, on the other hand, looks away because he never looks people in the eye. She starts explaining it to him in terms he doesn't understand and it pisses him off. Think about it, y'all. It's the 50s. She was a genius and she never backed down. That made it so her colleagues, who were basically all men, didn't speak to her. They didn't eat with her. Maurice said, forget all that. I'm a lot. In. And guess what? It didn't work. Because however much he locked in, Rosalind locked in harder. She was a gym rat. Through countless hours of work, Rosalind discovers this photo 51 that shows the difference fraction pattern of DNA. Listen closely. Maurice goes, great. Through this discovery, I found out that DNA is a single helix, which is like one line. Rosalind goes, <clears throat> he goes, I heard that. He goes, it's either a double or a triple helix two or three lines. So Maurice decides to stand on business. He says, it's a single helix. She goes, I guess you're gonna find out on your own. So she continues her research. Paper after paper comes out saying DNA is a single helix, DNA is a single helix. Scientists start looking a little closer. They're like, no, that's not right. Rosalind goes, like I said, two or three helixes, lock in. Maurice is irate. Now this whole time, paper after paper is coming out about DNA. Stuff that Rosalind figured out years ago but never published. See, the thing is, our world doesn't reward the most talented or the smartest. It rewards who did it first. Think about it. If someone made a Picasso painting without knowing anything about Picasso, it would be worthless because everyone would say Picasso did it first. It's the same thing in science and scientists understand this. So scientists shoot their shot, shoot their shot without extreme data to get their name in the history books. Rosalind was different. Can you prove it is all she cared about. So enter Watson and Crick, the fathers of DNA. They start working on a structure model without the evidence. Watson goes over to Maurice's office. Maurice is not there. So he goes over and sees Rosalind. He says, hmm, what you working on over there, girly? Talking to her in a disrespectful manner. She turns around to him and loses it on him. An imbecile trying to explain her own data to her pissed her off. He takes off. He runs into Maurice, who was running in at the same time because he heard all the noise. Watson goes, oh, she different. Maurice goes, story of my life, bro. But hey, I have a proposal. How about you, your coworker, and me work on this together? Watson goes, let's rock out. So Watson, Crick, and Maurice attend Rosalind's seminar about DNA so they can catch up. So she's teaching the science world about DNA and they find out, oh, she's years ahead of everyone. But Maurice's luck takes a turn for the better. Rosalind leaves because she hated her work environment. The big boss keeps all of Rosalind's work because he says it belongs to the lab. All of her work goes to Maurice. Remember that structure I told you Watson and Crick were working on earlier? Yeah, Rosalind saw the structure and her exact words were, it's very pretty, but can you prove it? So Maurice takes all of her work and gives it to Watson and Crick. And through that work, they were able to finish the structure. So they submit the structure and take the science world by storm. And they put in a little footnote, Maurice and Rosalind helped a bit. But Rosalind's papers were published along with theirs, just on the bottom, making it look like she kinda helped and wasn't a huge player. But Rosalind, cool as a fan, she says, okay, what's next? And she heads up an insane team of researchers in her new place. And boys, back-to-back -back discoveries, back-to-back -back publications. America hires her team to figure out the polio DNA structure, figures it out, polio cured. Then she gets sick. 
with cancer. Most believe it's due to the radiation she used in her countless hours of research with DNA. On the other hand, it took Maurice, Watson, and Crick 10 years to win the Nobel Prize because they didn't have proof. And they actually had to sit there and do the work. And it all would have been good until Watson writes a book where he's kind of sneak dissing Rosalind. Her colleagues who worked under her said, oh nah. So her papers start going out. People start looking at the dates. She was years ahead of them. So the disciplinary committee gets involved. They look into it and say no harm was done. Public was outraged. The committee head got so many letters, he had to backtrack and say, I made that decision when I had no experience in disciplinary stuff. And as for Maurice, to this day, his name is not in the history books. People said Watson and Crick for years. Then they said Watson and Crick stole Franklin's work. Nowhere in there is the name Maurice.